1392, and I'm back with another episode of a ABCs of Murder. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm playing. Now we're going to go check out the um, uh, fruit and vegetables place. Okay, how am I supposed to get in here? I keep stepping in blasted puddles. Oh, I found something. This place is run down. Mm hmm. It is. Garbage. Rubbish. Shop fronts. Shop for this rent. is a really cutthroat neighborhood. Anyone could have committed the crime. Yep. Anyone could have. Cat, get off your lazy butt and kill me some mice. Here, is there something else I can look for? Could you run? You are useless, I swear. Dash, a puddle. How clumsy. Whoopsie. Another puddle. Dash, a puddle. How clumsy. Another puddle. Okay, basically, uh, when you're, if you get lost in this game, just go up here to this little warning mark and it'll tell you what to do. I need to inspect the crime scene, so apparently I wasn't done in here. There we go. She just has one wound on the back of the head. There are no other wounds or signs of a struggle. She has a packet of play cigarette next to her hand. Did she drop it when she fell? This poor woman's head is resting in a very even-shaped pool of blood. Mm -hmm. hmm. The body is hidden by the counter and is not visible from the tobacco shop store. Many customers might have thought that Mrs. Asher had popped out. Possibly. I can't see any other mark on the floor. Keep inspecting the crime scene. Something more to her I need to be checking? Okay, no. Oh, no. Nope. Her inventory. There we go. There are cigarettes packets in a mess on the shelf. Mm-hmm. So, Poirot, any news? So, an ABC guide with no fingerprints, but prints all over the counter. Normally, the tobacco shop does not sell ABC guides. Exact. Mon ami, could you have a word with the neighbors? Some may have seen something. Of course, my friend, I'll do it straight away. I think I've looked everywhere here. Let us see if I can find any more information in the shop's surroundings. What she could on site.
Oh, four now. Four pence a letters, a lovely lot of letters, four pence only. Hmm. Inspector. This woman appears to be a smoker. Are you zeroing in on something, buddy? What's that? Maybe you can stare at people like that where you come from, but here it's very rude. She's a big smoker. She must have been a customer at the tobacco shop. Did you know Alice Asher well? And for starters, who are you? I'm Hercule Poirot, the detective. You're foreign, that's for sure, with your accent and your odd way about you. And you're here about Alice's murder, I suppose. Well, I've nothing to say to you. Did you speak to the victim yesterday? No, I never saw her. Please, try and help me, madame. Why should I help you? For your beautiful moustache? <laughs> yeah. Come on, move along now. You're scaring away my customers. Please, do not be ridiculous. I know that Alice Asher bought strawberries from you yesterday. Well, you know more than I do then. Run along now. I have work to do. Hmm. Strawberries, six pence a pound. Hey, Poirot. Is the greengrocer causing trouble? I'll sort her out. No, please, leave her, Chief Inspector. I'll get her to talk later. I've found the victim's niece. She's waiting for you in the back of the shop. Thank you, mon ami. I'll question her. Hmm. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Is that really enough? Oh, okay. Mrs. Asher was killed here. The absence of marks in the shop and the regular shape of the blood stains indicated beyond a doubt. Actually, probably. probably pretended to be a customer. He hit the shopkeeper from behind as he turned around to serve him. Probably. 
I'll get her to talk in a minute. Did we at least move the body so she can think? Jab the had the body removed out of respect for the victim's niece. His attention is commendable. Yes, it is. She appears to be very upset. She's dressed in mourning. She looks fragile. I did that faster than the other one. Woohoo! Talk to her. You were very fond of your aunt, am I right? She was the only family I had since my mother died. Your aunt did not have any children, is that correct? No. She was separated from her husband. What do you think about Franz Asher, your aunt's husband? He never left her alone. Poor aunt. She used to drop by all the time and make a scene. What a douche. Was your aunt afraid of her husband? He shouted a lot, but she wasn't afraid of him. Why, he used to slink away when she turned on him. He was afraid of her, if you like. Oh! Nice. Did you haunt enjoy good S? She had a bad throat, but she was well cared for by a doctor in London. Does Franz Asher work? All he's done for years is drink and gamble, but he used to be a very good cabinet maker. What does he live on? My aunt used to give him five shillings a week. That's probably where she got all them weird things that the hide. Th so if, so it's not him, or else he would have robbed the place. Why did she support such a goods for nothing? He was her husband. She couldn't leave him with nothing. I understand. You have been of great assistance, mademoiselle. So she cared for her husband, even if she probably didn't love him. Anymore. Please take this young lady home. My pleasure. Well, this Franz Asher does not seem to be quite so dangerous as Jeff says. And since Alice Asher gave him money regularly, it was not in his interest to kill her. No, it wasn't. So. I'm gonna go sit down and twiddle my, my mustache in front of a mirror. Go talk to that woman again, because she was in here at some point. Oh. That must be the husband. We have to wait for him to sleep it off. He's all yours, Poro. There are a few things I need to check. That must be some way of sobering him up. I wonder what his wife used to do. He must have scared the customers away. Uh. It's Ali Sasha's notebook. Ah, that's interesting. It probably contains information about our possible debtors and creditors. Well, let me look at the blasted thing. We'll find out. Bodley. The fruit seller has debts too. She will probably be more cooperative thanks to this piece of information. Oh, I've got you dead. Mary right. Brower was telling the truth. Mrs. Asher regularly gave money to her alcoholic husband. A box 
of new stockings. Hmm. He's not in any condition to be questioned. I have to find a way to sober him up. Okay, um, showed her 10 pounds, jeez. She can get shoes off too. God, these people are a lot older than they look. Hmm, oh, I know how we can sober them up. Wait, I want to just get something in the pack in the back. Okay, we can't go in the back. Um, there's something over here. There are cigarettes packets in a mess on the shelf. No, there's not. The book. Nothing suggests any sign of a fight. Okay, uh, let's go see if we can find something outside. I need some water to throw in his face. Because I don't think there's anything else in here. Yeah. Let's go talk to that lady outside. Strawberries! Six pence a pound! Your fruit is rotten. What? A foreigner dares to say that? According to the victim's account book, you owed her ten pounds for tobacco and magazines. That's a lie. She owed me one pound. I swear. Now, please be so kind as to explain this. Look at my account book. Alice owed me eleven pounds for fruit and vegetables. I may have had a slate at her shop, but she had one at mine. She owed me one pound. And that reminds me I have to get it back from her niece. That is quite enough. Your account book has saved you. But I might ask Chief Inspector Jap to throw you in the cells for one or two nights while he checks your entries. You want to go to prison? Prison? Now that's not fair. I haven't done nothing. In that case, I am counting on your full collaboration. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Huh. Listen, I didn't kill Alice, I swear. But it's true that I did go to the shop yesterday. At what time? Six o'clock. She left me a note saying she wanted some strawberries if I got some. I received them late, about six. So I took them over to her. But you did not see her. She wasn't in the shop, so I just put the strawberries on the counter and left. Did you see anything unusual in the shop? No. Well, maybe one thing. There was always a railway guide on the counter. Alice didn't sell them. Maybe it's the customer who left it there. You okay, so between five and six. I thought Alice had just gone to get her medicine from her room and that she'd be straight back. You mentioned medicine. Something for her cough. She used to take it a lot. Who do you think killed her? France. Her scoundrel of her husband. He was always after her for something. Well, he's a foreigner. Uh, sorry, sir. What I mean is he's German. That's even worse. Did you see Franz Asher enter the tobacco shop late yesterday afternoon? Well, no. But at that time of the day, the streets are packed. And I have better things to do than watch her shop. Murderer deliberately left behind this ABC. I wish I Alice figured that out sooner. The absence of fingerprints and the fact that it mm. is open at letter A for Endover leaves little doubt. Uh, but I ain't the only one. There is. Okay. 
Okay, I think there. I think we can now because did not see anybody. It's been five thirty and six p.m. I'll just borrow your bottle a moment. Take it. It's what Alice used to sober up her husband. But try not to empty the bottle. The old crone. Cat <laughs> vinegar. Yeah, that'll sober somebody up. God, vinegar is the strongest smell to it ever. So I think we're going to either put under his nose or we're going to beat him with it. Keep looking at him. He's not in any condition to be questioned. I have to find a way to sober him up. Really? Throw up in his face. <laughs> yep, right under the nose. Mes amis, I can say without a doubt that poor Mrs. Asher was killed between half past five and six. Killed when the street was packed with people. That's rather bold. I've been talking to the neighbors and... No one's seen anything? Or rather it's anything and everything. Am I wrong? <sighs> no. <laughs> yeah. This guy's like Sherlock Holmes. We must grill this villain Asher before he falls asleep again. This man is in rather a bad state. This man has been fighting and he smells of alcohol. Yep. He had been blood everywhere if he'd done anything. Care for a cigarette, monsieur? What's that? Scented cigarettes? No thanks. Bien. I was trying to be friendly, but you are quite right. Let us get down to business. You threatened to kill your wife, and now she's dead. So what? You shouldn't take things so seriously, sir. Nothing but empty threats. We didn't get on all that badly. So, it, it seems we're going so well with your wife. Why did you not leave with her? She was the one that left. Nothing to do with me, sir. Ah, women are flighty creatures. Did she run away with another man? Flighty? You talk funny. One thing for sure, if my wife was seeing another man, I'd have given her a good beating. Interesting. And what were you doing yesterday at the end of the afternoon? Can't recall. Come on, my friend. Try to remember. It is important. I'm really sorry, sir. But I don't remember a thing. I see. But maybe you do remember threatening to kill your wife? So what? You shouldn't take things so seriously, sir. Nothing but empty threats. We didn't get on all that badly. Are you often involved in fights? I don't know what you mean. You have a black eye, a to your coat's torn. Asha. Look me in the eye and tell me that you were in a fight. I'm looking. I'm looking. No, I wasn't in a fight. You are right. Looking at the state of you, you did not defend yourself. So someone gave you a good beating. A beating? No way. All right, he tore my coat and gave me a black eye. Did you see the state of him? A very interesting. Who is the other that you struck? Probably best if I tell you everything. Yesterday afternoon, I met Roderick Tanner. We'd bet on a dog fight together. An illegal bet, naturally. Yes, sir. Our dog won. Roderick got the money, but he refused to give me my share. And you thought about it. What time was this? In the evening, about six, I think. We were on the other side of town. You see, I couldn't have killed my wife.
Hmm. Asher's alibi appears to be confirmed. All the same, I'm going to call and check that he did have a fight with this Tanner on the afternoon of the murder. You can never trust this sort of chap. One thing is certain, Asher was a ruffian who used to beat his wife. But he's not very educated. It certainly was not him who wrote the letter signed ABC. Let's resume, Miss Things. We know the murderer pretended to be a customer. He did not kill her for money, that appears to be certain. I agree with you on that point. And the murderer left an ABC guide as a signature. Therefore, it's likely he wrote the letter. Indeed, but that doesn't explain why and how he did it. You are quite right. Why he did it is a mystery. But as for how he did it, we do know enough to try and reconstruct the events. Yeah. He pretended to be a customer. She turned her back on him. He struck her with something heavy. Reconstruction. I almost the had it. Enters the shop. Killer enters the shop. Mrs. Asher turns around to greet a customer. Yep. The murderer asks her for some tobacco. She turns her back to him. He seizes the opportunity to strike her. Mm -hmm. Turn around. He then places the ABC upside down before leaving. This is pretty simple. Everything appears to match the crime scene, mon cher Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Success. I had a failure. One failure because I forgot. So, so far he's the French Sherlock Holmes. That much we have figured out. Asher has a strong alibi and we don't have any other suspect. But what was the point of this crime? There wasn't She one. had no debts. She gave Franz Asher money regularly. She wasn't owed money. Nobody stood to gain anything. No doubt about it. The murderer is insane. Hmm. And I fear that we had not heard the last of him. I hope you're wrong for once. Yeah. Let's go back to London. If we hurry, we should catch the two past seven train. Are you coming? No. Unfortunately, I have to talk with Andover police. See you soon, then. Are you coming, Hastings? Let's go home. There's nothing for us here. So they live in London, but he's French. Well, do you have any idea about the killer's identity? Uh, hmm. The crime was committed Cupid by a man of medium height with red hair that and is a trophy eyes. Earned. He has a slight limp on the right foot and a wart just below his shoulder blade. Poirot! Mon ami, what do you want? You fix upon me a look of dog-like devotion and demand of me a pronouncement a la Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> now for the truth. I do not know what the murderer looks like, nor where he lives, nor how to set hands upon him. What shall we do, then? Nothing. Nothing? You have nothing to do go not on. Do not be so impatient, Hastings. The killer will manifest himself soon enough. I thought I heard the postman. Maybe there's some news. I would go and see. Unfortunately, no doubt about it, Hastings is going bored. Oh, that was so mean. Hastings is going bald. Dear Mr. Poirot, well, what do you think? I believe that I won this round. The end of our affair went like clockwork, don't you feel? But the fun has only just started. I would like to draw your attention to Bexilon Sea on the 25th of this month. We're having a crazy time. Best wishes, ABC. Hmm. The next crime will be in Bexil. We must warn Jap to Scotland Yard. Did the dun, letter dun, indicate dun. anything that might help the police? To be honest, I think we can already guess something about the next victim. But I need to think about it a little more. Wait, what? What do you mean? What? Uh, huh? It's impossible to get through to Scotland Yard. You're kidding me. These guys are useless. You're all useless. 
Daily Flicker, June the 22nd, 1935. Battle over control of bank system. What will the government do for money? Andover, murder of a tobacconist. Hmm. That's bothersome, though. Thinking. Let us examine this more closely. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. He only has one eye in this one. Yes, the eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. I used that before. You guys saw it. Both letters were written on the same typewriter and show the same characteristics. You surprise me, Poirot. You usually ignore material proof. But there is nothing usual about these case hastings. Nothing must be overlooked. Mm -hmm. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay. Okay, so the next one's gonna be a B. So, Poirot, have you found something? Oui, I believe so. But I am afraid uh, it is not mic. enough Sorry. to stop the murderer. Let us go and see Chief Inspector Chap. I will explain there. We're off on the next adventure. We did figure out some stuff here. But, uh, not a lot. The day and the place of where the, vi of where the next victim is. And that they will most likely start with the B. But, the thing is, with the first victim, she was picked at random. As far as we know. We shall continue this in the next episode. Um, like and subscribe and uh, peace out, guys.